Hi, I'm Nick Keel, uh, the Veristan Product Manager. Thank you for joining joining me and my colleague, Lynn Sarcioni, uh, for the NI Week session, Automating Embedded Software Testing Using Teststand, Veristand, and Diadem. In the session, we're going to talk about how we can use these three tools and integrate them to improve our embedded software testing process. The embedded software development process consists of a few different phases, um, ranging from initial design, where we're designing uh, the initial control systems and we're pairing that with a simulation model of a physical system, all the way through when we're building prototypes, generating some code, and then performing HIL validation and physical testing. Um, all along the way, we're doing a variety of tests to make sure that we get out uh, the bugs in our software as quickly and as early in the development process as possible. Uh, along the way, we'll be doing field evaluations and, and field tests, uh, as well as doing simulation-based tests. The goal is to move as many of these tests early, as early as possible in the design process. The goal of, of creating these test systems and be, being able to reuse our test components, the goal is to create an automated test system that traceably validates product requirements, uh, and it's available in software and hardware phases. So what does that actually mean? One, uh, when we're talking about automation, we want to be able to run things overnight or, or basically be able to walk away. Uh, we click a button and all of our test framework just runs and executes both regression tests and a variety of other tests. It needs to be traceable. So we basically be able to, we need to be able to find the data easily and we need to be able to map that back to, uh, back to requirements and manage the changes. And then it needs to integrate automatically into our product requirements databases. So we basically be, need to be able to test, test a part of our product and ensure that the requirement that was initially set forth uh, is validated and is tested properly. And then we need to be able to integrate it both in software and hardware. And what we mean by that um, is testing early in the development process before hardware is even available. And then we need to integrate the test cases and the test profiles um, that we, we perform early in the process so that we can use those again later on. So how do we incorporate all of these different things? So uh, at every phase of the process, we're doing tests. Uh, even when we're doing original algorithm design, uh, we're validating against that against plant models and we're generating test profiles. Um, and then, of course, we're logging data and, and, and mapping that to making, make sure that the system operates the way it's supposed to operate. Right? So what we can see is that if we architect our system properly and automate the, uh, the system, we're able to reuse a lot of the test components as we go from design all the way through physical testing. So here you can see uh, we could have a, a common set of data logs and a common set of test profiles that are used um, from all the way from the design into test. And one way to, to increase the automation and, and ensure consistency is by developing a process where all of your tools talk to one another and communicate with one another and share data back through a common database. Uh, this lets us create libraries of test cases, libraries of user interfaces and analysis reports uh, that we're able to pull uh, as the tests and the, the configurations change and as we move along the development process. This also helps us uh, communicate between different teams because in many teams, you'll have your design engineers uh, writing some code and doing some things and then giving it to a VNV or a test team. Um, having an automation process in place uh, allows all of those different groups to communicate with one another and share a common code base. Here we're looking at a, an, a national instrument software architecture that uses uh, NI Veristand as the core real-time operating engine and NI Testand as the automation that, uh, that runs the Veristand engine. Right. And then because of the, the flexible nature of NI Testand, we're able to integrate with other softwares, things like requirements management and the requirements gateway tools uh, in NI Data. And then we could manage all of that through a common source code control repository. So using these tools together enables us to create a complete framework that will enable us to test things both early in the process and late in the process and reuse as many components as possible. I want to take a, a little bit of time just for the uh, those of you who aren't necessarily familiar with how all of these tools are designed to be used and what they what they're designed to do. Uh, 
Um, so the Antivirus-Dan product is, is the real-time execution engine in this case, and it's built for hardware in the loop and test cell control and monitoring systems. It includes uh, simulation model integration and easy configuration-based access to hardware I.O. Uh, it's got built-in data logging, and you can also generate real-time stimulus inside of the product. It works across uh, all of the National Instruments product lines, all the, all the way from a, a, st a standard Windows PC through um, multi-chassis, multi-PXI systems uh, that can be used in, together and in, in synchronized amongst one another. Uh, our largest system to date is a is a uh, 27 PXI systems tied together to do a full Ironbird simulator. Um, and Veristand is designed not only to be configuration-based and usable out of the box, but it's also designed to be extended using LabVIEW and things like TestStand. Antiverstand has a few basic automation tools built inside of it. Uh, so uh, at a basic level, um, you've got a tool that basically lets you record and playback macros or user macros. So in this case, you can turn on the macro recorder, uh, perform some actions on your user interface, uh, stop the recording, and then play those user, user actions back for later. And there's also a, a CSV file playback, so you can define uh, a driveline profile, for instance, or some other open loop style of automation inside of a CSV file, and then you can play that back whenever you need to. And if you get, need to get a little bit more sophisticated, it's got a stimulus profile editor, which lets you create real-time test sequences and real-time test scripts and perform automation such as data, automated data logging, launching of the Veristand UI and, and, and tools, as well as deploying real-time test sequences in line. So there's quite a bit of functionality built into Veristand out of the box uh, for, for basic automation and test sequencing. If you want to get more sophisticated, NI Test Stand is a great product that's designed for extremely flexible automation. Uh, you can pull in code modules from many, many different environments, access to databases, uh, generate uh, sophisticated test reports that can be customized to meet your needs. Um, and you can, you can multi-thread and perform multiple processes in parallel. This is a, a tool that uh, would sit on top of Veristand and it would deploy the Veristand real-time engine from an automated test framework. Something that's really useful about NI Test Stand is the, the reporting and the, uh, reporting and deployment options available. Um, you can also integrate into requirements traceability tools, and you can call nearly anything. It's a very open framework um, that's, that can be customized and used to many needs. So for more sophisticated or advanced automation tools or needs, um, we strongly recommend NI Test Stand. And many of my customers use Test Stand today, uh, and it, it's our it's our a recommended library for, for performing test automation. So let's do um, some basic comparisons between the stimulus profile that is, is included in Veristand, it's part of the Veristand product, and what you would use if you were integrating NI Testand. So out of the box, they do a lot of the same things. Um, in, but what Testand offers is uh, advanced test reporting, so very configurable HTML, HTML XML um, can, uh, test reports. We can integrate it into databases, so you're able to do a, a bit more configuration management and test, test request management uh, by being able to store a lot of your test reports uh, inside of a database. We can also integrate uh, requirements capability. And this is something that's not built into Veristand today, um, but there are tools available that would let you map your requirements back into the NI tests using NI test stand. Um, and a couple of years ago, we, we worked with IBM, we partnered with IBM uh, to integrate their IBM rational tool into NI test stand using a test integration adapter. We're going to cover that more in, in a little bit. And then there are other things that enable you to, to manage other pieces of hardware and software outside of just Veristan. When you're running the HIL test, um, Veristan controls a lot of the real-time I.O. that's built into it. Uh, but let's say you needed to control a power supply that isn't necessarily going to run in real-time. NI testing can very quickly and easily deploy and run um, those types of hardware without needing to write any custom logic or custom code. Um, this makes test end very, very nice and much quicker out of the box experience uh, for creating these automated tests that extend beyond just the real time sequencing. I also want to touch base on, on NI DNM. So, DNM is a really powerful 
um, data analysis and data searching tool, and it can also generate very professional looking reports. Uh, we like to call DDM Excel on steroids, but it does so much more than that. Um, you're able to find files from, from nearly any time using, uh, using metadata, and it stores files in, in a binary file format in a very intelligent way. Um, so you're able to store many, many files in many, many places. On, on, could be on databases or it could be on, on, on servers in a different place. Uh, but you're able to search the data and find it. Uh, and then when you grab that data, you're able to, to align it and timestamp it and run scripts to perform post-processing and analysis. Um, so DNM is a very powerful tool. And for doing report generation and post-processing and analytics, uh, it's, it's what we recommend in these automated test systems. So then the question is, how do we make all of this happen? We've told you about what the products do individually um, and, and, and how we could use them in, independently. Uh, but the magic and, and really where the value comes in is being able to put all of these tools together in, in an automated framework where Veristan would run the real-time sequences and real-time tests. Teststand would automate all of those tests and link to our requirements databases. And then we would send all that data for, to DNM for post-processing, advanced report generation, and data analysis and, and mining. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Lynn to talk through some of the examples of how we could go about automating and performing these, systems, these types of tests. Okay, so here we have uh, Veristan open and running. And so we're just going to talk about how we automate this project that uh, is the engine demo project that ships with Veristan. So just to give you some familiarity with the project itself, uh, what this project does is it, it actually runs an engine or simulates an engine. Um, so if we want to turn on our engine, we just select this engine power and turn it on, and then we can set our desired RPM to whatever value we would like. And we can see that our um, actual RPM is ramping up to our desired and is going to settle appropriately. So Nick had mentioned a few few different tools. The first one I want to talk about is actually uh, the stimulus profile. So this is something that um, enables you to execute a few uh, few automation, um, or gives you the ability to do some automation, but doesn't give you maybe everything you need. So let's just point that out first. So you get you can really appreciate the value of uh, test stand. So this is a stimulus profile. It's somewhat similar to what we were showing in the slides with TestStand, except as we mentioned, maybe a fewer um, components that you, um, it offers less, I should say, than the TestStand. Um, so what this is gonna do, is gonna open the Veristan workspace, it's gonna run a real-time sequence, and then it's going to have an operator prompt. That's all that this sequence does. Um, I said it ran a real-time sequence, so let's just take a look at that briefly. Um, all this real-time sequence does, it actually warms up the engine. So it's going to set the engine speed to 2500, um, wait a certain amount of time, basically wait until it settles, and then set the engine RPM to 8000, and again, wait until it settles. In the meantime, we're doing some multitasking. While that's happening, we're actually checking our engine temperature to see whether or not the uh, engine temperature goes out of um, what we consider a safe range. And so if we see our engine temperature going over 110, it's actually going to go ahead and shut down the whole, um, the whole system or the whole sequence. So let's go ahead and just run this so you can see the, how this behaves in the system here. So to start, it's going to bring us back down to our, um, excuse me, that initial 2500 RPM. Um, because I started it at 5000 RPM, so I had to ramp down there. And then we have the next phase where it's ramping up to 8,000. And then while it's doing this, it's also monitoring for an over temperature condition, right? Yes, that is correct, exactly. And that looks like that's what just happened here. Yes, exactly. So it looks like we went out of range, but um, it doesn't look as though um, you can tell as easily. So the best way to do that is actually go, to go back to test stand and you can see that our actual uh, sequence failed. So that means that, in fact, that section did not, uh, or sorry, the warm section failed, meaning that it went above uh, that 110 degrees. So again, I mentioned this is the, the stimulus profile editor, but 
what benefit does this have or what benefit does testing have over this? So let's take a look now at testing. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this guy and then we'll go ahead and undeploy Veristan for now. Um, let's go ahead and open testing. So here I've created um, a real-time sequence, or excuse me, a test and sequence um, that we're actually going to so I'm going to go ahead and open a new sequence. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually go ahead and um, drag a Veristan step that you can see that we have specifically for um, our test stand application. Um, and we're going to go ahead and drag one of, excuse me, the initialized Veristan step into our setup portion of our sequence. And with this step, you'll see we have a way to configure it using the configure gateway button there at the bottom. Um, and the only thing, only necessary thing you really have to do to configure this is to select the project. So I'm going to navigate to our stimulus profile, or excuse me, our engine demo um, example, again, that ships with Veristand. Uh, if you have a username or password for your project, you can enter it, but in this case, we don't, so we'll just leave it as is. Um, the other step you're always going to want is the stop Veristan sequence. So that's going to undeploy, excuse me, stop Veristan step. That is going to undeploy uh, the Veristan project and um, ensure that after the project has run that everything shuts down correctly. The next thing we're going to want to do is uh, to simulate what we were doing or replicate what we are doing in the stimulus profile editor, we're going to use a uh, real-time sequence. And we have two ways of doing this. One is uh, using the real-time sequence numeric limit test. So if you have a return variable that's a numeric type, you can select that one. In our case, we have a pass-fail uh, Boolean that is returned. So we are going to use the real-time sequence pass-fail test. We also have a, a similar button that we need to go ahead and configure. So here we're going to select the path for the stimulus profile that we are using. Again, this is just a stimulus profile that, excuse me, a real-time sequence that ships with Veristand. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and select this engine demo advanced and return value. Again, that does return a Boolean, which is why we are using the real-time sequence pass fail test step. Um, with that, when you select a sequence, you can configure any parameters for it. In this case, all of our parameters are channel paths, uh, and they default to what you have saved to the real-time sequence file. So in our case, we have all of our channel paths as aliases. Now we can go ahead and run it again with the, these three steps only, and we can essentially do the same thing that we were doing uh, before with our stimulus profile, except now we're doing it with test end, and we should be able to get um, a more interesting report. I'm going to save this um, as a demo sequence file um, here on my desktop so we can get this started. So we're going to go ahead and run it. Um, you can see in Project Explorer at the very bottom, it says running project. That's how you know that uh, it is starting to deploy the project. There is an optional tag with the test stand steps as well that allows you to show the deployment log um, as you proceed. Uh, I just have that set to false right now. So we're not going to see the typical deployment window you see with Veristand. We're just going to get the indication on the project that it is running. In test stand itself, um, you'll see when I drag this window down here um, that the real-time sequence pass-fail test is currently running. That's what that arrow indicates. And right now you can see in the Veristan window that we're at 2500 on our RPM. Um, it has already completed the initialized Veristan step. You can tell that by the done um, indicator there in test stand. And now we're ramping up to our 8,000 RPM. And you can see that our temperature there is getting pretty high, about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then again, you can see our step, our real-time sequence has failed, similar to what we saw in um, the Stimulus Profile Editor. 
This is a, the, one of the default reports you can get with TestDan. Again, we mentioned that you can customize this in any way. Um, if I select the, the sequence that failed, it can actually pull me down to the section of my report that's failed. And now I know specifically where in my report um, my test had failed. In this case, it's my real-time sequence pass-fail test, similarly to what we saw previously. So you can customize these reports. You can make them XML, HTML, etc. You can add images to them. All of that can be done through TestDan. Um, but say you have a, a manager who wants you to be able to, you know, give him reports on a daily basis, and in, in order to do that, um, you need a little bit more pieces, more uh, data, more information. So we're going to start uh, by adding two additional steps, Veristan steps to the system. The first is the start VS logging, so that's going to start the logging for. Um, for our test, so we're going to put it around our real-time sequence pass-fail test um, so that we are logging data only while the test is running. Similarly to the other steps, it has a configuration dialog, so you go ahead and select that. And the main thing you're going to set is the log file path. So I'm going to browse to my demo folder that I created and just save it here. Um, there's also the option of segment file sizes. If you believe your files may get um, quite large, you can do that. You have that as an option. And you also have the ability to add more properties or description, uh, add some metadata to your files. And then finally, you know, the other important component uh, is the channels. So you have the option to choose which channels you would like to log. So in this case, I'm going to log the actual RPM, desired RPM, and engine temperature for my report for my manager. So once you've made those selections, you can go ahead and hit OK. And then similarly to initialize Veristan and stop Veristan, um, we have a stop Veristan logging. So anytime you start something, you have to stop it. Um, for that one, there's no configuration. It, it knows that it should be stopping whatever has been started by the stop Veristan logging step. So we're going to go ahead and run uh, this quickly so that we create a log. And then we're going to use DDM to open that log and create a, a generic report template um, so that every time I run this test, you know, with maybe a new engine controller in the future um, that my colleagues have passed to me, I can always generate the same report, same report template uh, using this, um, this same sequence that I've created here. So you can see we're on the initialized Veristan step um, we've gone past the start Veristan logging step or now, and it are now executing the real-time sequence. I'm going to just bring up my file explorer here so we can see that the log has been uh, kicked off. So I'll go to my demo folder on my desktop. You can see that I have a demo TDMS file that's been started. It's not completed yet because we haven't stopped the logging as of yet. All right, it's completed. So we have our um, demo log. You can see that, again, we failed. It's the same test. We're going to continue to fail it until we change some of those parameters. Um, so in DNM, we're going to go ahead and clear out the data I had in here previously and bring in the data that we just created. So we're going to just drag and drop our TDMS file into DNM, and then we're going to create a report out of this file, out of this data. So you can see we have our system time, so that is a channel that's native to Veristan. It's just the relative time of deployment. Um, it's always increasing. And then we have our two other channels, our actual RPM, desired RPM, excuse me, three other, and engine temperature. So let's go ahead and create a report. So this is the report template that we're going to want to show our boss every time. Um, this is essentially what we're creating, but let's create it from scratch. So let's go ahead and put down um, one graph here. We're just going to plot our system time, actual time, and desired time together. Now 
can go ahead and reduce my graph size here. And then I'm just go ahead and um, add a legend. So make it a little, little bit more clear for my boss what's what. And then um, just to give them idea, you know, generic idea of what failed, maybe I can make this report a little more clear when we have some time later on. But uh, I can show him that we, we stopped the test when the engine temperature reached about 110. So again, let me just adjust this graph here so it all fits on one page. And let's go ahead and save this. So this is now my report template that I'll be using every time I run this test and sequence. I'm going to go ahead and save it to my demo directory like I had previously. Excellent. So now we want to be able to use this uh, template, like I said, every time I run my real t um, my um, sequence. And the way that we're going to do that is actually through scripting. So DDM has a really great feature where you can, uh, instead of having to customize things using VB scripts, you know, if you're a coder, that's great. If you're not, it's okay. Uh, we have tools that allow you to actually record what you do in Diadem and write it to a script so that you can, instead of taking that, those many clicks in the future, um, you can instead just run the script to do all of the clicks for you. So the first thing I'm going to do by, by recording is clear my data portal so that um, you know the data that I enter is going to be brand new every time. I'm going to drag and drop my TDMS data from my directory. You can see my script is updating as I make these changes. I'm going to load this report template that I just created. Again, you can see that it's loading that layout and refreshing the report. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually export this PDF, or excuse me, export this report to a PDF so I can just shoot it off in an email to my boss. So I'll go ahead and save this. Excellent. So if you go back to our script, you can see that that has all been recorded into a script. Uh, if I go ahead and stop recording and save it, now I can call this script whatever I want in the future, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to call it from uh, test end, so that all I have to do is run this one test end script, and it's going to do everything for me. It's going to be lovely. So let's go back to test end and make the changes that are needed in order to do this. So um, similarly, the Veristand DDM has its own sub uh, functions that have been wrapped for your convenience. Uh, there are a few that you need to do um, similarly to the other two we were doing. There's an open and close, so we're going to add an open DDM. With DDM, you actually have to copy and, or use a reference. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open, or excuse me, add a local variable. That's the DDM reference. And go ahead and name it DDM. And this is just going to be used to pass the DDM handle from one step to another. So now we can add that to our open DDM and change it to our, our locals um, reference that we created, local variable that we created. We also have our closed DDM, so we have to pass that reference through there as well. Veristan has similar references, but they've all been added for you um, when you add the initialize Veristan step, so you don't have to take um, these processes. And then lastly, we're going to run our script. So we're going to add our local locals DDM reference, and then we're going to select our VB script path. And I'm also going to select this wait for script option. This is just going to wait at the step until the script is complete, uh, has completely finished executing. And that's all the changes you need to make. So let's go ahead and delete some of these files uh, so I can prove to you that these are being generated on the fly. And um, up first I have to delete, or excuse me, remove these, the file handle from DDM. So I'll go ahead and do that. Um, and delete the TDMS file that's going to be created. Delete the PDF that'll be created. And I'll just delete some of these extra reports that I have in here from TestStand. So we're going to go ahead and run this one more time. Hopefully I'm not boring you guys by now. Uh, we have opened our DDM reference. Now we're initializing Veristand. Did 
depending on the, the size of your um, Veristand system definition, you know, if you have hundreds upon thousands of channels, the deployment time may vary. Um, so we're, um, that may be something that you encounter, but it should be up and running, you know, for sure within um, a, a minute here. Uh, here we go. We have our 2,500 RPM that we're executing on our um, real-time sequence. We should shortly be getting up to our 8,000 RPM. And we're at our 8,000 RPM. And we've generated our report in DNM. So um, just to show you guys some of the files that have been created, we again have our failed test and report. In our demo, you can see those files I deleted have been recreated. We now have our PDF for our boss already ready to go and email to be emailed out. So hopefully this guy this shows you guys that um, this process shouldn't be too intimidating, but it's definitely worthwhile um, for future future use. Um, so we've run through a few of these things. We've created a real-time sequence, or excuse me, we've implemented a real-time sequence and integrated it with a few different components. We've added some post processing with DDM as well. Um, and hopefully you guys can really see the benefit of using these tools together. Um, it's going to help you, you know, get to your, um, essentially build your systems faster and enable you to provide better results for your management. In touching on the topic of requirements traceability, um, how do we map the tests that we run back to the requirements that we've set forth for our devices under test. Um, and I has been working with IBM uh, to create kind of a, a collaboration between the a a rational quality manager tool and an test and so we have a, an integration adapter that lets you look at dashboards view status updates collaborate with your teams and then also integrate back into your require, require requirements management tools. So it's a really comprehensive tool that allows you to see things um, wherever they are in the testing process and manage the overall embedded software development and testing much more easily. Um, and again, it allows the maximum reuse. So now you can, if somebody makes a, a, a test script or a test artifact, you're able to easily reuse that across projects and across teams within a given project. Um, so they're actually in the in the NIWIC in a week booth here, they're they're very good partners in National Instruments. Um, so this is a, a great tool that that we've we've had great success success with over the years. Um, here's an example of of how all the systems are put together. So you've seen how NI Test and 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 DDM and Veristand all work together to run these automated tests. Um, through test and we're now able to uh, link to an integration adapter and then tie in to IBM's quality manager tools and their web-based interfaces. So the rational quality manager uh, hi highlights things and organizes things into test plans and test cases. It lets you schedule when you run your tests and who's going to run them and also links back to the results. So those PDFs and those and those scripts that you created and the data that you've you've stored, they're all accessible using the quality manager tool. Um, so it's a, it's a great way to put it all together to create a really, really comprehensive view and in, in, in service around your embedded software development and testing. And this is kind of how it uh, how they would all come together. Uh, it's, it's a really it's another view. Um, test and can really run and execute and automate as you've seen as Lynn showed you can run the the Veristand real-time engine. It can coordinate the post-processing analysis and then all of the data gets fed back into requirements management tools the IBM requirements quality manager and then that integrates directly into all sorts of different requirements databases, such as Doors or even Word or Excel or the Office tools. Um, so when you put this all together, you've got a really automated, streamlined system that you can use to track the development of your products as well as the quality of those, those products. Um, so in review, uh, we want to create an automated framework 
um, that allows us to get as much testing done with as little manual interaction as possible. We want to run as many tests as we can um, and, and do it in the most efficient way we can possibly do that. And automation is the way to do that. And we also want to make the, the products, uh, we want to be able to make sure that the tests that we're doing are efficient and usable. Uh, and that really comes down to making sure that when we're running a test, it's mapping back to a requirement that we set forth at the beginning of the project. And then you know, making sure that we're actually testing what we want to test. Uh, it's very important. And again, all of this, this automation, uh, enables all of the team, all of the members of a given test team and a development team to, con to contribute and to create test frameworks and test architectures. What this means is that you're able to reuse tests uh, from the design part of your, your life cycle all the way into the, the HIL validation and even into the physical test. Um, so by adding this automation and, and, and tying everything together and creating these reusable libraries, uh, we're able to, to collaborate better and improve the overall test process. Thank you very much. One other thing that I wanted to share with you uh, is all of the different tools. We have resources available on all of these different tools. Um, so uh, you'll see that most of them start with n.com. So n.com slash ferristan slash testan slash diadem. Uh, and then for the uh, video demonstration, a more in-depth look at the IBM tools, uh, we've got n.com slash quality management. And then uh, for the overall uh, NI HIL platform review, um, HIL-NI.com has case studies, uh, user solutions, and resources uh, for using the NI tools for HIL testing.